Hello and welcome to this new Minecraft tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to learn how to set up and create a new server for your students to work on. If you followed the last video, you should have downloaded and installed Minecraft Education on either your Windows 10 device or your Mac OS device. Then you should log in using your email you used to download that software and that should bring you to this screen with your avatar here. So to set up a server, first you need to click the play button and it will take you to a new screen we have your world, so in this case I've got YouTube world for the later tutorials and you've got create a new world tab so you click that and that should take you to a new screen in this new screen you've got your world name the modes you can put on as well as daytime and nighttime effects as well as the world type so for this tutorial I'm going to call this one test then for the default game modes survival gives you lives as well as a hunger as well as day and night cycles and uh, creatures in the world that can attack your player. So for this, I will call it creative because that means you have no, you have infinite lives. You are basically indestructible, and you have access to all the blocks in your inventory to build and create a new structure. I'd also add peaceful to that because that makes those those uh, monsters who spawn in that they do not spawn in on peaceful. It's just you and some animals. I'd also recommend turning cheats on because that allows you to change the day and night cycle through a forward slash in the uh, game and I'd also have it on always day unless you want day and night cycles because in experience I've seen that the night comes quite dark on the computer screen and that will make it difficult for your students to see what they're doing. A seed is uh, the map type so if, you, if you've got a certain map layout that you like and you found on the internet it will give you a sequence of numbers to which then you can type in there and you can get the exact same map layout. But I would recommend ignoring that and go onto a flat world type because that gives you a flat surface plane where you can build what you want and you have no like, trees or hills in the way that you need to dest destroy to build your building. Finally, I'll go into the multiplayer settings and make sure both of these have turned on so once you're on your world, that broadcasts through your Wi Fi a LAN network, so a local area network to your school classroom so then students using who want to join your world can literally just join in and join straight into the world without any outside students from anywhere around the world or anything joining in so it's just your classroom kids so once you've done that and you're happy with all your settings here click create and this will generate your world see I've made a super flat world and I've got access to all my blocks that I want as well as uh, tools and search functions so once you've done that you can save and quit and that will bring you back out to the main menu so if you're searching for a world you click play and you click your friends tab this will obviously bring up this so that server I've just made is still active so there's a LAN game of my name as well as the world test so your students would click on that it's just disappeared because I've closed the server so as long as the server is open on your laptop any of your students can join just by clicking that tab. If you want to add a server that's outside the classroom, you can click add and you need to find the server name, so, the next, so in our case it would be called test, the IP address and the port, which are displayed in the settings. So if you click, if I quickly show you this, so if I click test, and I click send, so your IP address is there and your port is leaves the same port that's in the settings already. And that should take you to one that's outside your school network. This will not work if you're on the same network. So I'll quickly save. I'll quickly take you through a couple of settings. Usually in the classroom, you have quite a few uh, noisy computers who play all the music at the same time, and that can be quite loud. So I go to audio and all your things and turn the music down to nothing because it can be quite irritating. Also, if you have language issues, you can also change the language. Video options, I'd make sure these things are the things I've turned on here are turned on because that allows you to basically get a clearer picture as well as a further view distance so you can see buildings that are in the distance. But that's totally dependent on what your computer can handle, whether you can turn all these onto maximum or the way you can run. You've also got your sensitivity, and if you choose to use control, you can set the buttons here as well as the keyboard and mouse settings. You've also, if you're a character, you can also change the customization of your character through all these different things. And that is it for this tutorial. 
I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. The next tutorial will be on useful blocks to use within your lessons. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.